Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about probability in genetics. To be specific, rule of multiplication and addition. If you guys need, take pen and a paper and try and practice during the video. Pause it as and when you need. That will make video very interesting and easy to understand. So let's begin. Alright, so let's start with multiplication. Now, multiplication is used in genetics when we are uh, having independent events, when we are dealing with independent events occurring in a sequence. And how would we know that we have to apply the rule of multiplication in this kind of uh, question? That is uh, by the presence of word end in the question. Okay, You will see the word end present in the question. That means you need to apply the rule of multiplication. Let's just take a couple of examples and make this clear for us. Alright, let's just begin with a very uh, basic problem which says when a coin is flipped three times, what is the probability that head will appear all three times? First time also we need head and second time also we need head and third time also we are expecting head to appear. So what is the probability that all three times when you flip a coin? head will appear. So probability of head to appear when you flip a coin is 1 by 2 right because there is only uh, two possibility head and tail to appear. So to, for head to appear is 1 and 2 when you flip a coin first time. Now second time when you flip a coin again you will have 1 by 2 possibility and third time when you flip a coin also you will have 1 by 2 possibility of head to appear. So now what we need to do is just multiply all the probability. Okay, and, the, and the answer will be 1 by 8. So 1 by 8 is the probability of getting head all the three times when I flip the coin. Right, let's, let's move on to second problem which is also similar but now we'll move towards genetic side. Alright, so what the second problem says, in a family of three children, what is the probability that all three are girls? Somewhat similar to question number one. So that is the first birth, the probability of child being a girl is one by two, right? Second time also the probability is one by two. In the third birth also the probability of the child being girl is one by two. So what we need to do, simply multiply all the probabilities. So you get the final answer, one by eight is the probability that all three are girls. Now this was still a very uh, simple problem. Let's take an example where genes are involved. Alright, so this problem says in a cross between pea plants that are heterozygous for the round shaped seed that is capital R and small r, what is the probability that the offspring will be homozygous recessive or wrinkled shaped seed? Alright, so the question says that both the parents are heterozygous for the uh, round shape. So let's put the parents first. That is heterozygous means capital R and small r, capital R and small r. And what we are looking for? Offspring which has homozygous recessive or wrinkled shape seed. So homozygous recessive is small r, small r. This is what we are looking for. What is the probability that we can get this combination in the offspring out of these two parents? Alright. So now, what is the probability that this particular parent, this parent will contribute this small r to the offspring? It is 1 by 2, right? Because it can give either this capital R or small r. We are looking for only small r. So the probability that first parent contributes to this small r is 1 by 2. And similarly, what is the probability that the other parent is also giving a small r? It is 1 by 2. So the probability that first parent and the second parent both are giving the small r is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2. That is 1 by 2. Four. So the probability that the offspring will be homozygous recessive is 1 by 4. Now this is only one gene right. So if I want I can just simply uh, you know calculate this even with the help of Punnett square. Let's see if you are getting the same answer. So first parent is capital R small r and the second parent is also capital R small r. So what are the possible combinations that we can get? Capital R capital R capital R small r 
once again capital R small r and small r small r we are getting all this combinations out of these possibilities there is only one possibility that I'm getting small r small r or homozygous recessive right looking at the Punnett square I can say 1 by 4 the same thing that we calculated here with the help of probability or with the help of multiplication rule now one might wonder that when we have a Punnett square to you know calculate this it becomes very easy we can just see it and uh, calculate the probability but look at this problem it has only one gene it is talking about only one gene when you have more than one gene two genes three genes five genes it becomes very difficult with Punnett square it's very very complicated in such cases where you have more number of genes rule of multiplication and addition comes in handy so let's take one more example for multiplication where we are dealing with more than one number of genes all right so this problem says in a cross between this parent and this parent look at this there are five genes present in each parent what is the probability that the offspring will be of this particular combination now don't get scared looking at so many genes what we will do is we will take one gene at a time that will make the problem very easy to solve so let's take gene a first what we have is in one parent capital A capital A and the second parent capital A small a now here take Punnett square for each gene individually and see what combination they have asked what is the probability to get that particular combination so let's see how we can do that parent number one is capital A capital A and parent number two has capital A small a so these are all possible combinations that we can get what they have asked in the offspring capital A capital A combinations so what is the probability looking at this Punnett square it is 2 out of 4 alright or it is 1 by 2 so the probability that we get capital A capital A is 1 by 2 alright similarly now we will take gene B the first parent has capital B capital B and the second parent has capital B small b so these are the possible outcomes uh, what they have asked in the offspring capital B and small b combination look at this again we have two chances out of four to get capital B small b so 2 by 4 or 1 by 2 so the probability of getting capital B small b is 1 by 2 what I'm doing is individually calculating probability of each combination and just putting it right here let's move to gene C now first parent has capital C small c and the second parent also has capital C small c so these are the possible outcome and what they have asked for small c small c so here you have small c small c the probability is 1 out of 4 so let's put it here let's move to gene D now the first parent has capital D small d second parent also has capital D small d so out of these combination what they have asked in offspring small d small d similar to uh, gnc so you have one out of four probability so here we will write one by four you know what i've always felt when i uh, you know deal with such kind of calculations and all it's very easy when i put all in step you know maybe i feel i'm repeating the steps while doing the thing but it makes the thing very clear for me if i try to do it in my head sometimes i get confused so i always prefer to you know go step by step doesn't matter it takes 10 steps 15 steps i'll just write it down and i'll make sure that you know i'm on the right track so that's why i'm taking one by one and showing you in the detail alright so let's move to the last gene that is E first parent is capital E small e so these are the outcomes that we get and what they have asked in offspring capital E capital E so here I can see only one combination out of four and the probability is one by four now what we are looking for we are looking for the whole set we need all these combinations so we found the probability individually now what we need to do simply multiply the whole thing so that gives me probability of 1 in 256 so this is the probability that I can get this particular combination out of these two type of parents having five different sets of genes now see 
because we had this uh, multiplication it became very easy for us to calculate if we had to do it simply by Punnett square you know it's going to be really complicated so uh, that's how rule of multiplication and addition is going to help us while calculating probability in genetics now let's take addition now we use addition in genetics when the events are occurring mutually exclusive that means there are chances that the event could go either way either this or that could happen so how would you know that you are you have to apply the addition rule that is with the presence of the word or in the question right you know what is the probability that this or that could happen let's take a few example and understand all right let's start with a simple example again when a dice is rolled what is the probability that either four or six will come either four or six it can you know we are looking for either four or six any one is fine with me so let's see how we'll do this what is the probability that four will come when i roll a dice so the probability is one out of six that a four can appear when i roll a dice right and what is the probability that six will come same thing one out of six chances there that six will appear now we are looking for either of them we are not specifically asking for both of them so either four or six is fine that so that means what we will do we will just add it up so that makes it two by six or one by three probability that when i roll a dice i will get either four or six the probability is one by three all right let's move towards genetics now all right so what this problem says in a cross between pea plants that are heterozygous for round shaped seed what is the probability that offspring being a heterozygous okay all right so the parents are heterozygous so let's put that first both the parents are capital r smaller capital r smaller and we want a heterozygous offspring what is the probability to get heterozygous offspring this combination now here what is the chance that this parent gives capital r half of the time yes and this parent is giving smaller say for example to get this combination what is the probability again half of the time so this parent giving capital r and this parent giving small r the probability is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 that is 1 by 4 this could happen one way or it can happen the other way also right this parent is giving small r half of the time and this parent is giving capital r half of the time this is also possible this way so again it is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 that is 1 by 4 so we are looking for either one type of possibility which finally gives me capital r smaller combination so i will add it up that becomes 2 by 4 or it is 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 is the possibility that i will get heterozygous offspring with these two heterozygous parents now let's do the same thing with punnett square because we are dealing with only one gene and let's see if we are getting the same answer or not this is what we have got both the parents capital r and small r so look at this there are two possibilities out of four that i get capital r small r offspring so two out of four that is nothing but one out of two so that's what we got when we applied the addition rule now let's take one more example where we are dealing with more than one gene so this problem says in a cross between this parent and this parent what is the probability that offspring will be either this or this combination we have possibility we are not particular we need either this combination or that combination so looking at the question we know that we are going to apply the addition rule now what we need to do is we need to first find out the probability of each combination uh, separately as we just saw in the multiplication we will deal with each gene individually so let's take gene a first so parent one has capital a small a and parent two also has capital a small a so we are going to see both the combinations side by side okay so let me just put it here it becomes easy to understand i'm looking for either this offspring or this one offspring okay so both you know in any case both the offspring for gene a has the same combination that is capital a capital a and the probability of having that combination out of these two parent is one out of four okay so let's write it here one by four here also it is one by four 
Now let's move to gene B. Parent one has capital B, capital B, and parent two has capital B, small b. These are the possible outcome. What they have asked in the uh, first type of offspring, capital B, capital B. So the probability is two out of four, or I can say one by two, right? The second offspring they have asked, capital B, small b. That is also two by four or one by two. So let's write it down. Now let's move to gene C. Parent one has capital C, capital C, and parent two has capital C, small c. All right. So these are the possible outcome. Offspring one requires capital C, capital C. That is uh, two out of four, or I can say one by two probability. Let me write down here. Offspring two is capital C, small c. So that is also two by four or one by two. Now what I need to do to get this particular combination, I need to multiply all the probabilities. That is one by sixteen. Here also I need to multiply because I need this whole combination. So that is also 1 by 16. Now I am asking that I need either this or that. So finally we are looking for either this combination or that combination. That means we need to apply addition rule. So 1 by 16 plus 1 by 16. That is 2 by 16 or it is 1 by 8. The probability is 1 by 8 that we get either this offspring or this offspring out of this combination of parents. So that's all for now. I hope this was easy to understand and I did not confuse you. Do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and I will see you next time. Until then, keep learning.